In this tutorial, you'll learn how to rig a character for games using simple 3ds Max bones techniques. The character you will be rigging is this zombie character. It has fairly human proportions. This makes the process a bit easier to understand, as we are all used to the shape and form of human anatomy. As you understand the rigging process better, you'll be able to branch out to more extreme characters and creatures. As you go through this rather long tutorial, keep in mind that rigging is more of an art form than an exact science. Different riggers have different methods. Sometimes these methods are driven by the rigger's personal preferences. Other times they are driven by the project at hand. You don't necessarily rig a game's character the same way you would one for the movie industry. Sometimes the building of a rig can be dictated by the animator's preferences. Remember that a rigger's job is to make the animator's life easier by providing him or her with a rig that is easy to animate. The sort of control that you see here is what you will be learning throughout this tutorial. Back to the project at hand. Notice that this zombie character is fully textured. This actually makes it a bit harder to see the geometry in the shaded viewport. It is often easier to only see the wire color of objects when rigging a character. The zombie is made of seven components, the body, the head, eyes, jaw, and teeth. In the display panel, switch the shaded display mode to object color. You may need to click in the viewport for the changes to take effect. For rigging, this type of display is easier to read. The rendering itself is not affected, as the render shows the textured character in all its glory. The viewport setup also defaults to displaying shadows. This is called realistic mode. This also could potentially hinder your work. If you prefer, you can opt for the shaded mode instead. This is really a personal preference, so go with the mode that makes you feel more comfortable. Press F4 to see the underlying geometry. Before you rig a character, you need to ensure it is modeled correctly as it needs to deform properly at the joints. Make sure it is built with quad polygons and pay special attention to the joints where the deformations are most important. You also want to ensure the character is symmetrical. This makes it much easier to model and infinitely easier to rig. Symmetry is very important as far as limbs are concerned such as arms, legs, fingers, etc. Smaller details such as a shirt not tucked in on one side or a fractured cranium are less of a problem. It is also important that the character model is centered in the space. Notice how the feet are based around the 000, 000 point in space and that they are sitting directly on the ground plane and not sunk underneath. You can use the F3 toggle to see this better in shaded or wireframe modes. Notice also in the front view how the X-plane is cutting through the middle of the character. Even the body's pivot point has been relocated to 000, centered on the ground between the feet. All this is important for symmetry purposes both when building the geometry of the character, but also for rigging as you will see in this tutorial. Notice also how the character is built in a straight T-stance pose. This is a good rule to adopt. Try to avoid modeling the character in a relaxed pose. This makes the building of the skeleton harder. Once the rigging is done, the animator can always pose the character in any stance they need. The next area of importance is scaling. You want to stay away from any scaling factors other than 100%. When you set yourself to animate an object or character that is rigged to a skeleton, you always want to make sure the object's scale factor is set to 100%. In fact, this is generally true with any object you plan to animate, especially when there are hierarchies involved. So what do you do when you decide to scale a character after you've built it? This zombie here has a height of about 60 generic units. The easiest way to see this is to create a temporary box next to the character and testing out the height. Delete the box when done. In 3ds Max, 60 generic units are meant to equal 60 inches. 
This makes this particular character about five feet tall. A little short. So you decide to scale him up by about 20% so that he is six feet tall, or about 180 centimeters. Here's another reason why centering the character to the world space earlier was the right approach. Select all the components that make the zombie, and choose the scale tool from the main toolbar. Change the coordinate system to world, and set the transform center to use the third option, use transform coordinate center. This way, when you scale the selected components, the character would scale up from the 000 world origin instead of the selection center. To scale the zombie up by 20% exactly, right-click the scale tool and enter uniform scale ratio of 120% in the transform type inbox. The zombie is now larger and taller, about 72 inches or 6 feet. You can use the box trick to test the height. Incidentally, you don't need a box to compare the height, although it's the easiest visual tool to use. You can also use the tape helper tool. Or simply the measure distance tool. And clicking two points on screen. The distance measured displays on the status bar. So now the zombie is bigger and the scale factor is clearly 120% as seen in the transform type ins. This is bound to give you problems later, so it is important to reset the object scale factors to 100% before proceeding. The easiest way to do this is to select all objects you need to reset and then in the utility panel use the reset X form button and reset the selection. This does the job as now the scale factor is back down to 100% on individual components. The reset X form tool also adds a reset X form modifier to each selected object. You can collapse the stack in one sweep by again making sure all components are selected and then in the utility panel again use the collapse tool in multiple objects mode. Click the collapse selected button to collapse the stacks of the individual components in the selection. The scale factors are now reset. Save your file under another name such as sixfootzombie.max. In the next movie you cover some rotation concepts and set a layering system to help with scene management.